And I wanted to invite you to take your Bibles with me tonight. We'll turn to John chapter number 10 as we get started. John chapter number 10, and you can look for it there for verse number 1. John chapter 10 and verse 1. We're going to read the first 15 verses and see a tremendous illustration from God's Word that I believe will be a help and a blessing to us as we seek to serve the Lord and make a difference for Christ. Uh, if you're familiar with John chapter 10, you might immediately be aware of what sort of uh, illustration we're going to see from the book of John. And uh, tonight we're going to see an illustration about sheep. Um, I really like the Bible use of the illustrations about sheep that you see in the scriptures, whether it's John 10 or maybe Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, and some of those passages that deal with the, the sheep relationship to the shepherd and how that pictures our relationship with the Lord. I really like the Bible illustrations of sheep more than I like real sheep. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of real sheep. Uh, I don't want to, I don't really want to, I mean, they they look nice in a picture, but they're noisy and they smell bad, and uh, I don't want to pick them up or play with them. But I like the Bible illustration. It's really powerful. Um, but I, I will say that I was looking for a slide to use with our study tonight, and uh, this has nothing to do with the message. I just thought you would enjoy uh, this picture, just because it's ironic. Uh, here are some sheep in this picture wearing wool sweaters. <laughs> I just thought that was ironic. It's pretty funny. Little lambs wearing wool sweaters. Um, I don't know why they didn't just leave the wool on the sheep. <laughs> it would have made more sense. Just leave it the way they were. God gave them a perfectly good sweater. You didn't have to take it off. So anyways, that has nothing to do with our study. I just saw it when I was looking for a slide for tonight, and I, I couldn't resist. But anyways, we're going to get started by reading our portion of scripture here in John chapter 10. We can start with verse number 1, and we'll look down through verse 15. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the, the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his, uh, his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. But when he putteth forth his own, and when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. All right, let's pray and ask God's guidance as we get into our study this evening. Heavenly Father, thank you again for your word and the rich, powerful truths that we find in it over and over again to help us and to instruct us. Pray that as we look at this simple message this evening that looks into this mm -hmm. parable that you gave or this illustration, we pray that you would uh, give us some guidance tonight that would help us as we seek to serve you and seek to make a difference for the cause of Christ mm -hmm. in the days ahead. Mm -hmm. Lord, I pray that your spirit would guide each word and each thought and that our hearts would be directed to truth. Use this time, we pray, for your glory. In mm -hmm. Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to look this evening at this parable. It does refer to it as a parable in verse 6 that Jesus gave regarding the uh, shepherd and the sheep. And uh, we're going to focus in on one of the characters. There's a lot of characters in this story. Uh, you see in verse number one, it talks about uh, thieves and robbers. Uh, then in talk, verse two, it talks about the shepherd. Uh, in verse three, it talks about the porter. Uh, then in verse number seven, Jesus says, I am the door. And then we find the thief in verse 10. Then we find the sheep in verse 11. Then we find the hireling. There's a lot of characters in this story. We're not going to cover all the story. The story. We're not going to cover all of the uh, characters of the story. But I do want to focus in on what Jesus says, particularly in verse number uh, 12 and 13. Uh, because we do see here, he so talks about a hireling who is not the shepherd, uh, but one who serves the shepherd, who is only the sheep or not, and that when the wolf comes, uh, he is very afraid, and he leaves the sheep and flees uh, for his own safety. And so we're going to talk a little bit about the hireling tonight as we look at this illustration that Jesus gave of the sheep and the shepherd. The first I wanted to mention for our study this evening is the wolf. 
because we we see an interesting thing here when he talks in verse 11 or verse 12 and uh, well i guess just verse 12 he talks about the wolf mm -hmm. because usually we don't think about wolves very much when we talk about this theme because usually when we talk about our adversary we don't think about a wolf but the truth is that for a shepherd and the sheep, uh, one of the most common predators would be a wolf, especially in certain uh, certain environments. We don't have lions and tigers and those sorts of animals here in North America, but we do have wolves. And so for a shepherd, certainly a wolf would be a very concerning thing for the sheep. And so Jesus uses this illustration, talks about a wolf, because the ravages of predators are always a concern for sheep. You know, it's a constant situation where sheep need protection. Boy, they're one of the most defenseless creatures on the earth. I don't know how they survived outside of uh, outside of uh, human uh, nurture and care. Uh, sheep out on their own would be pretty hopeless, pretty defenseless. Domesticated sheep, boy, they wouldn't survive very long in the wilderness. The wolves would have their way. And certainly we see that illustrated very clearly in the life of young David, the shepherd boy. Didn't he fight off the wild animals? Uh, we remember he gives the story of how he uh, had a lion and a bear come against his, his uh, father's sheep. And uh, he had to protect them. And boy, he stood with vigilance and, and courage and was able to heroically fight off a lion and a bear uh, in, in separate events uh, without any apparent help from outside sources. <laughs> Obviously, the Lord gave him grace and strength to fight, but, uh, but certainly a tremendous situation of danger for those sheep. It's very easy for one predator to do tremendous damage to the flock. Uh, one wolf or one lion or one bear might harm, mark, might harm or destroy multitudes of the sheep uh, more even than they're necessarily going to require for their own nutrition. And so uh, this is the way it has always been. Uh, sheep have always faced predators. And it will be so for a long time, right up until uh, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled. Isaiah 11.6 tells us this. Let's bring it up here. 11, Isaiah 11.6, The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. I love that promise in Isaiah 11, verse 6, that talks about Christ's kingdom during the millennial reign, uh, when everything on earth will be peace. Uh, there'll be no danger, there'll be no harm. Even a little child can walk alongside a lion or a tiger or a bear or a wolf, and uh, it won't matter at all. Uh, there'll be no harm in danger. But until then... <laughs> Sheep needs to, need to still watch out for wolves. They still need to watch out for those predators uh, that can be a danger. Uh, they can be a great harm and hurt. And the truth is that in the spiritual battle that we face, we also face a tremendous predator. Uh, one who is vicious, one who is unscrupulous, uh, one who is violent and deceitful. We usually talk about him as a lion, don't we? We don't usually refer to our adversary as a wolf. We call him a lion because in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. The Bible pictures the devil like a lion. Uh, but I believe here also uh, we find him pictured as a wolf in John chapter number 10. A lion is certainly a tremendous predator against sheep, but also a wolf. Our adversary is cruel. He is unrelenting. And he never takes a day off. Have you ever noticed that? He's vicious and heartless. He's also referred to in Revelation chapter 20, a couple of others, other ways. Revelation 20 and verse number 2, which says, And he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. You know what? The devil, he is a cold-blooded, villainous reptile. He's a snake. He's a serpent. He's a dragon. He is vicious and cruel and heartless. And he will stop at nothing to ravage the flock. And that's why he's pictured here as a wolf. Because he will wreak havoc in any flock given the opportunity. We find here that in the end of verse 12 it says that the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. And that's what our adversary is always trying to do, isn't it? He's trying to catch sheep and he's trying to scatter sheep. He's trying to get in the middle of things and wreak havoc and heartache in the midst of God's people. And there's a tremendous attack and onslaught every day of our lives that there is a spiritual battle and a spiritual warfare. And as we look at the situations of life, sometimes we can get sidetracked with other things and distracted by the details or by the, um, the nitty gritty of the events. But the truth is that the spiritual warfare we face is real. There is a real wolf. Uh, there is a, he's not a physical wolf, but a spiritual wolf. 
And he's trying to destroy God's people. He is seeking to undermine the work of the Lord. He's seeking to uh, cause division. He's seeking to cause strife and contention. He's seeking to cause discouragement and disease spiritually and frustration and bitterness. And the adversary that we fight, as I said, he's unscrupulous. He doesn't fight fair. Boy, sometimes you think, well, you know, a fair fight, this person could beat up that person. Uh, the devil doesn't fight fair. He doesn't like playing, playing fair. He's not just... Uh, stealing the idea of fighting unfairly, he invented it. Uh, he is the one who originated deception and cruelty and hatred. He is the one who originated abuse and violence. He is the ultimate adversary. And so more than any earthly sheep needs to be concerned about an earthly wolf, uh, spiritually God's sheep need to be watchful against a spiritual wolf that would seek to harm them. And so the wolf is a tremendous reality in the Christian life, and so oftentimes uh, he is neglected. Don't give him too much credit, but do give him attention enough to watch for him. We are told, as I said in 1 Peter 5, 8, to be sober, to be vigilant, to be watchful, uh, that God would give us grace to stand against our adversary. And all that stands in the way of the wolf, what's the one person who stands in the way of the wolf? The shepherd. And when the shepherd's not around, the hireling. <laughs> the shepherd's not always there, and so sometimes the shepherd might go on holidays. Sometimes the shepherd might take a day off. Sometimes the shepherd, in an earthly sense, I mean, our heavenly shepherd doesn't, but in the earthly sense, a shepherd might uh, might need some rest and need some sleep. He maybe has to go to the market to buy some uh, ointment, perhaps, as we see in Psalm 23, he anointeth my head with oil. He might need to go to the market to buy some ointment to anoint his sheep, and he needs mm -hmm. to leave those sheep with somebody trustworthy. And so he has representatives in his absence who are left in charge of the sheep. And one of their responsibilities is to stand against that wolf uh, because they stand as representatives of that shepherd. And you know what? If the wolf is hindered by the shepherd, he should also be hindered by the representatives of that shepherd in his absence. Now, our shepherd, as I said, he is spiritually always present. I mean, he will never leave us nor forsake us, as we mentioned this morning, uh, but also... As we look at our daily lives, we can stand in the strength of the Lord every single day. Our shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, he is always there. He is the good shepherd, as we find here in verse number 10. Uh, we find in Hebrews chapter 13, he is the great shepherd. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 4, we find that he is the chief shepherd. I mean, when you want to talk about shepherds, it's Jesus. Uh, he is everything we need as a shepherd spiritually. But in the physical sense, Jesus has departed, hasn't he? Uh, in the physical sense, we don't see the presence of God in this room today like the disciples did as they walked with Jesus for three and a half years in his earthly ministry. Uh, they had him there. I mean, when G this is recorded in John chapter 10, they literally heard the voice of Jesus speaking these words and explaining these truths. But we don't have that physical presence of Jesus here today. And so in the absence physically of Jesus, uh, he has left his servants as those who he has hired to do the work in his stead. We are his representatives in this world and in the ministry. And so I wanted not only to talk about the wolf, but I also wanted to talk about the worker. Because mm -hmm. we are the workers of the Lord. We are laborers together with God. We are his laborers who work in that harvest field, who work in that pasture uh, to care for the work of the Lord. And uh, we, we are also the sheep. I know that. <laughs> but at the same time, I really believe that when he talks here about the hireling, uh, that he's talking about people who have been given a responsibility to care for the sheep. Now, I suspect that as he was talking about this parable, he was probably referring, by the hirelings, he was probably referring to these scribes and Pharisees, uh, to these ones who, in his day, had been given the charge of spiritual leadership to the people of God and had forsaken that, they had abandoned their post, they had neglected their responsibility and opportunity. But I really believe that there are those in the Christian era of our day in the New Testament church that people are given responsibility by the Lord to help care for and nurture God's flock. Now, certainly that's true of pastors. And oftentimes we would use this to illustrate a pastor because the Bible talks about uh, the pastor of the church in 1 Peter chapter 5 uh, having a responsibility to care for the flock of God, to feed the flock of God, and to have some oversight thereof. And so pastors certainly are under shepherds uh, to the chief shepherd. 
But at the same time, I think that anybody who has an opportunity of Christian example and leadership can have an influence for the Lord to try and be a blessing and a help uh, to other Christians, especially new believers, those who are growing in the Lord. And the opportunity that we have as ministers to the Lord, it might not be, you might not be a pastor, you might not be a missionary, but as a minister of the Lord in God's work, we can labor. We are all ministers together of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what? Every member is a minister and every saved saint is a servant of the Lord. And so as we can labor in God, we are his workers. But what we find here is this worker who has been hired and appointed by the master to stand in his stead, to take the job and to fulfill the responsibilities as, as though the master was fulfilling them himself, to take on and do the work that he would do if he was there. And that might sound like a big responsibility when you're trying to fill Jesus' shoes. But the power of Christ is in his children. He is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. And so as God's children, we are enabled by the power of God. We have the spirit of God that enabled Christ, also enabling us, and we are used of God to do his work. And so it's, it shouldn't feel like a daunting task to try to take on the work that God has given to each of us. You and I all have responsibilities. We labor in the Lord's work to be that faithful worker, to be that faithful laborer in God's harvest field uh, in, another, <laughs> in another parable, but to, but to be that faithful under-shepherd who wants to help the Lord's work go forward. And you know what? As we stand for God, there's a tremendous work. And so this, this laborer, this hireling, this hired one, I'm almost hesitant to use the word hireling sometimes because uh, because sometimes to us as Christians that word hireling is, is so often used with this context. Sometimes we might think a hireling is something bad uh, because here in this context, this hireling isn't spoken of very well. But a hireling just means somebody who's hired to do a job. And so this hired worker, this laborer, has been hired to do certain things. And so the work of laboring, uh, caring for these sheep, providing for these sheep, making sure that they're, uh, that they're needs are met you know if they uh they need some anointing on the head with oil uh maybe they uh get uh get stopped rolled over on their back and they can't get their feet under the game you know give them a little nudge to get them right to the game uh caring for those sheep nurturing those sheep uh providing and and watching over those sheep what a tremendous job for a laborer uh, helping keep them clean helping keep them fed uh, those are important jobs. And certainly in the Lord's work, there's a lot of responsibilities that you and I can have, uh, whether it's teaching, whether it's you know caring for physical needs like cleaning or maybe helping to feed somebody or to provide for the needs of the ministry. We all have those opportunities. And uh, this, this hireling is laboring and uh, the work is hard, but at the same time, at least there's a reward. <laughs> he says, it's hard work, but I'm getting paid and the pay is good and the job is fair and it's a good job. And this hireling doesn't mind the work. You know what? He might remind himself of Proverbs 14 and verse 23 where it says, In all labor there is profit, but the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury. He says, well, talk is cheap. I better get to work because in all labor there is profit. And you know what? As we labor for the Lord, there is profit and there is benefit. And though sometimes we might feel like it's not so, the Bible does tell us that in our, there, our labor is not in vain in the Lord. And so it's valuable as we labor for the Lord. There is reward. There is value. Uh, there is opportunity and success. And this, this laborer, as we, the laborer and hireling that we see here in this passage, uh, is doing his work and he's willing to do it for the pay. He wouldn't necessarily work for free, maybe, but the compensation is enough until the wolf bears his teeth, until he hears the roar of the lion, until the noise starts getting too close for comfort. And all of a sudden, we find that this hireling Jesus is talking about Please. He says, I, the pay's not worth it. I'm out of here. This is, the pay was good up until the lion showed up, up until the wolf showed up. The hireling is fine with the work as long as it's just work. But when the battle cry is sounded, he's ready to quit. He's ready to hit the road and say, I'm out of here. And so this hireling doesn't mind the work, doesn't mind the pay, but he doesn't want to battle. He doesn't want to fight the wolf. Because a wolf is intimidating. I've never had to face a wolf in the forest. <laughs> I've never had to stand between a real wolf and, uh, and perhaps somebody that I love or, or something of value to me. Uh, a wolf would be pretty intimidating. Uh, I mean, I've had to face down a, 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 an aggressive dog, but not a wolf. Uh, a wild wolf, that would be a scary thing. And so this hireling, when he sees the wolf coming, he leaves the sheep and fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not 
for the sheep. You know what he cared for? He cared for, I'm going to get my paycheck. <laughs> I'm going to get what I deserve for my labors. But then once the wolf bears his teeth, he says, this is too much. I do not want to get in to a life and death battle with this adversary. When we get into the Christian work, sometimes the labor of ministry, we can get into the work and we can get into the activities and we might be teaching a class or we might be uh, ministering in some aspect in the church ministry, helping around with uh, certain things, maybe behind the scenes, maybe out in front of people. We might be doing something in the word of the Lord, but you know what? The devil hates that work. <laughs> The devil hates what we're trying to do for God here at Lakeland Baptist Church. He hates what you're trying to do for God in the opportunities of ministry that you have. And the wolf will come. He wants to scatter. He wants to destroy. He wants to hurt the ministry of God's work in our lives. And as we labor for the Lord and as we serve the Lord, the devil is that roaring lion. He is that wolf who's seeking to scatter the sheep and seeking to harm God's work. Let's not quit when the battle starts to exceed the prey or not the pray, the pay. <laughs> when the battle starts to exceed the pay, let's not quit uh, just because the, the struggle gets hard. When we see the difficulty, sometimes we might say, it's not worth it anymore. It's not worth fighting this battle for the Lord anymore. But you know what? Our labor is not in vain. And as we stand for God and as we fight the Christian fight of faith, as we resist our adversary, the Bible does give us a promise that if we'll submit ourselves to God and resist that adversary, that he will flee from us. We can have victory. We can see God do what needs to be done to care for us. Because you know what? That hireling, he might say, I can't handle the wolf. I'm out of here. But he might not realize that the shepherd's just around the corner coming as reinforcements to say, I've got your back. I am right here behind you. You're not fighting that wolf on your own. You can stand with me right beside you. And so we've seen here the wolf. We've seen the worker. But I'd like also lastly to talk about the willingness that we see here uh, to, to stand. We find that the, the hireling flees because he doesn't care for the sheep. But it's really contrasted when we see in verses 14 and 15 that good shepherd. Jesus says again, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine as the father knoweth me, even so know I the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. That's the heart of that shepherd. He says, I don't care if that wolf wants to attack me. I am ready to stand in the way. And certainly he literally did lay down his life. And we find that commented on the rest of the passage here in verse 17, Jesus said, Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down with myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. And so Jesus talks about how he was going to lay down his life. And we know, of course, that at Calvary, Jesus Christ did just that. He laid down his life for the sake of the sheep. The truth is that as we labor in the Lord's work, we need to be that one who has the heart of the shepherd, a worker with the willingness of heart that the shepherd has to invest ourselves in God's work because the care of the sheep that God has, has put in our lives uh, is an opportunity for us not to be passed up. And if we will have the heart of that shepherd, we can see God do tremendous things in our lives to see the, the work that God can do really protect those sheep who are vulnerable to the attacks of the evil one. There are people all around us that God is trying to build up, God is trying to protect, that God is trying to raise up and destroy. And sometimes the people that we look at as the biggest adversaries of God's work in our lives are sometimes the very sheep that the wolf is nipping at their heels already. And we are the ones that God can use by prayer and by spiritual battle to defend them by, uh, from the adversary who's seeking to destroy. And so God wants to use us at, with the heart of the shepherd uh, to stand for the Lord. You can tell whether you have the heart of a hireling or the heart of the shepherd when the wolf comes by whether or not you're going to face down the devil with Holy Ghost fire or whether it's time to flee for greener pastures and still waters. <laughs> whether it's time to say, uh, this is too scary. I can't deal with the spiritual opposition. I can't deal with the spiritual pressure. I'm out of here. That's what the hireling does. But the, the worker who has the heart of the shepherd says, I'm going to stand with God. I'm going to stand up for the Lord and the truth. And I'm going to stand up for what's right. I'm not scared of this adversary because I've got the power of God on my side. The holy power of my God is in me and I need not fear. In my strength, I can do nothing. 
But if I will submit to God and resist the devil, he will flee from me. He will flee from these sheep. He will be driven away through the power of the grace of God working in my life. And there is no saint of God too feeble to stand up in the power of God and drive back the forces of darkness. You and I, as God's children, don't stand in our own strength. We stand on the limitless promises of Scripture that we can drive back the powers of darkness. We can send that wolf packing. We can have victory by the grace of God if we will have the willingness to say, you know what, these sheep matter to God, and these sheep matter to me, and I'm going to stand with the Lord. I'm going to live by faith. I'm going to trust the Lord, and I'm going to have that heart of the shepherd that is willing to, to give what it costs to save those sheep who are in danger. Do you know what? A hireling who flees is no more value than the sheep. I mean, he's no more valuable than the sheep because the sheep are fleeing and the hirelings flee. What's the difference? <laughs> There's no difference. He's just as worthless in that day of battle. Let us be those ones who when the devil strikes, when the battle is on, that we will stand by faith and take hold of the throne of God and say, God, help. <laughs> Get involved. Lord, bring the need to a resolution. Save your people, O Lord. Uh, we could be like those ones that Joel talks about, the priests and ministers of the Lord, ministers of the Lord who will stand between the porch and the altar and, and cry out to God and say, Save thy people, O Lord. That we would be those ones who would plead for them. Uh, I'm mindful of a couple of verses. Psalm 119 in verse number 148, it says, My eyes prevent the night watches, that I might meditate in thy word. And I got to thinking about the, the, the hireling and how even in the dark of night, sometimes he might hear those wolves howling in the distance. And he might need, even in those night watches, his eyes might need to be alert and ready and aware and, and holding back the, the sleep from his eyes in those times, and willing to sacrifice and willing to suffer and willing to uh, make an effort uh, to see what needs to be done to preserve those sheep for his good shepherd. And sometimes we might need to uh, have our eyes prevent the night watches and, and to stand even uh, at those late times to plead with God and to stand against the adversary and to stand for truth and righteousness in our own walk with the Lord. Uh, I'm reminded also, this verse came to my thought as I was thinking on these things from Lamentations chapter 2 and verse 19. It says, Arise, cry out in the night. In the beginning of the watches, pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up thy hands toward him for the life of thy young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street. Now that's the context of the destruction of Jerusalem. But boy, that's what we as Christians can do, can't we? We can cry out in the night in the beginning of the watches and pour out our heart before God and plead for the salvation and the rescue of, of lost souls, but also of saved people who need God to intervene in their lives. We can be those ones who will be a faithful watchman for the Lord, guarding those sheep by prayer, by supplication and intercession, that we would be those ones who would take the heart of the shepherd and say, I'm going to work. I'm going to labor by prayer. I'm going to labor by fasting. I'm going to labor in the word. I'm going to do what God has given me to do with my hands and with my heart to labor for these sheep that God has given, that their hearts can be changed, that their lives can be salvaged, that they can be transformed with the power of grace of God. We can drive back the darkness. We can chase off that, that howling wolf that's seeking to... Uh, to destroy what God is seeking to do in the lives of his sheep. Will you stand as, as the shepherd's hands and feet? Remember, we are the body of Christ. We can stand as his hands and his feet, ready to drive the demon hordes back on our knees. We can stand highest in prayer on our knees, seeking the Lord. Will the howl of the wolf strike as much terror in your mm -hmm. hearts as it does to the sheep? Or will the howl of the wolf be a cry mm -hmm. to arms to say, to the battlefield. Let's go. We're ready to stir, be stirred to act and to labor in God's strength. You know what? That The lion roars, the wolf howls, but we need not fear because greater, and I will say it again, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. God is for us. Who can be against us? We need not fear any adversary. Let's be those laborers who will stand with the heart of the shepherd and say, you know what? My shepherd, my good shepherd, my great shepherd, this chief shepherd of our souls has given me a charge to stand for my people, to stand for the saints of God and to defend them by prayer, to defend them by uh, fasting, to defend them with the truth of the word of God, to resist our adversary in spiritual warfare today. Let us be those ones who will not be like the hireling who flees when the battle comes, but who will persist in prayer, who will persist in faithfulness, persist in a walk with God that can overcome our adversary. We can see miracles. We can see God's hand mighty upon our lives. You know what? There is no life 
too much ravaged by the devil that we cannot see God work. You and I can be used to the Lord to be those laborers, to be the hands and feet and heart of the Savior working in this world today. And I want us to be encouraged not to be that hireling who'll just give up and flee when things get difficult and the devil starts roaring and the devil starts howling at us, but that we would take, take that as an indication, boy, it must be just about time for a victory. It must be just about time for God to shine the light of that truth into this situation mm -hmm. and to open hearts to the light. Never give up hope in your care of souls as a shepherd's under helper. Uh, we have God's responsibility to pray for each other. God forbid that we should ever sin against the Lord and ceasing to pray for each other. Let's labor together. Let's stand against evil uh, by getting on our knees and by seeing what God can do through us. May God give us wisdom to labor in the work he's given to us because there is still every day an open door in God's work for miracles. And you and I need not fear that wolf. But we must be that worker with a willing heart to say, I will be the shepherd's representative. I will be the one who will stand. You and I need to decide today, are we going to leave this place today a hireling who will flee or a hired one with the heart of the shepherd to say, I will stand against that wolf. I will fight spiritually against the adversary and the wiles of the devil, knowing that God's grace is greater. Let's make that choice on our own hearts tonight and close with prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that each of us tonight would make a decision for you, that we would say, Lord, I'm not going to be a hireling. I'm not going to flee from the battle, but Lord, I will stand in truth and righteousness. I will obey you. I'll trust you. I'll believe in your grace. And that whenever that wolf begins to howl, that I will take it as a call to action to stand for truth and righteousness. And that I will be willing, uh, with the heart of my shepherd, to love and care for those sheep around me, those precious ones that you've given your life for. Help us, Father, as we yield ourselves to you tonight to be enabled by your spirit to see wherein you can direct each of our hearts and lives this week. In Jesus' name we pray for your help. Amen. Mm -hmm.